Hey guys, welcome to video. My name's Hugh and I'm from Home Network Solutions. Now in this video, I'm gonna be looking at three different types of internet connection that I'm gonna use for a failover on a Ubiquiti Unify gateway. Specifically in this case, it will be a Dream Machine Pro SE. And I just wanna to test to see if there's any difference between those different types of internet connections and how long the switchover from primary to secondary is. So those three internet connection types I'm gonna test are gonna be pretty commonly used ones. So we've got 5G or cellular, we've got Starlink, and we've got a second line. So fibers to the premise broadband line. And I just wanna understand really, is the performance the same for each of those and which one might be most suitable for you? This is going to be especially important for business because they don't want any downtime. They want a very, very minimal downtime between the switch over between those connections. So let's get straight on with it and see what the results show. Okay, so the first type of internet connection I'm gonna test is 5G, and this is the most cost effective. So I'm using a Zycle router from 3Mobile here. If I show you this, I'll put the model up in the corner. Um, this is, it's just got no external antennas or anything. I'm just using it straight off the router. The signal for 5G is pretty good here. So I'll get about 130 megs uh, download with it just sat on the side of my office. So it's, it's really pretty good. From a cost perspective, this is the best option because this is 20 pound a month and you get the router with that uh, monthly cost. So considering 5G routers are probably around three to 400 pounds, this is a pretty cheap option. I've got this router in bridge mode and it's just a D DHCP type connection straight into the uh, Dream Machine. I would love to use Unify 5G router, but unfortunately they don't have one. They don't stop one, they only do 4G ones. So um, yeah, we're gonna be using this one. So let's see how it gets on. Okay, so this is the service I'm gonna be using, this continuous internet speed test by Star Trinity Software. Um, it's really simple to use and you can just start the test here. But what I wanna do is I wanna go up to the top here and then I get the second by second results, which is great. You can see that nice and clearly there. And um, we see everything's online and now I've unplugged it. See it going off, it says down, 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 down. I've sped this up, up to eight times faster. And it's come up, but it's not fully up yet. And there we have it. So secondary's back up at 23.47, so that's 37 seconds downtime. Okay, so I did this test three times just to make sure we were gonna get some consistency on results. And we've got results of 37 seconds, 28 seconds, and then 39 seconds bringing us to an average of around 34 and a half seconds, which is actually quite a long time. So is 5G the best option? Well, let's have a look at Starlink and see if it fares any better. Okay, so the second type of internet connection I'll be using is Starlink. This is actually a Gen 2 model, um, but the, uh, the principle's the same if you're using a Gen 3. I've got this in bridge mode, so it's just gonna be passing connection straight through to the Dream Machine, uh, and that's a DHCP type connection. Starlink's more expensive, costs about 75 pound a month, and you've got to buy the dish, which is another 300 pound a month. You might have to have it installed as well, so it can end up being quite pricey. Um, the advantage of Starlink is it's very flexible in its deployment. You can put it anywhere as long as it's got a view of the sky and it's gonna get an internet connection. Whereas with 5G, you're more dependent on the location of the cellular towers and how strong that signal uh, strength is. Okay, so let's have a look at the Starlink. Okay, so we've got the speed test running. Um, it's all good and now we're going to unplug it. So 13, 29, 38 and then I've sped this up eight times faster. And we come back on at 13, 30, 15. So a total of 37 seconds downtime. Okay, so the results for the Starlinks, we've got 37 seconds, 49 seconds, and 43 seconds, bringing the average to 43 seconds, which is a really quite a long time. Um, it's not very impressive at all that. If you're looking at some of the uh, speeds on the Starlink, it's a little bit disappointing. In fairness to the Starlink, I'd only had it up for about 20 minutes. I just plonked it on my lawn. Um, so maybe those would be a little bit better if it'd been running for a lot longer, but still the switch over time was way too long, 43 seconds, that is a long time, um, certainly if you were on a call or something like that. Okay, so let's look at the secondary internet connection. Okay, so we'll see how the uh, second internet connection does here. We've got a hardwired FTTP connection. Um, I would just say that if you've got the option of having a fiber to the premise connection over Starlink 5G, that is always gonna be preferable but it might be a little bit more expensive, certainly than 5G, um, but in terms of reliability, then FTTP is probably gonna be your most reliable type of connection. So let's check the results and see how quickly the switchover happens with this connection. Okay, straight into it, unplugged at 13.43.44, 
and I've sped this up a little bit and then we're back on with a total of 16 seconds downtime. Okay, so we've got the results for the FTTP. So it's 16 seconds, 14 seconds, and then 13 seconds, bringing us to an average of just over 14 seconds, 14.33 seconds, um, which is obviously significantly quicker than the Starlink and the 5G. The other interesting thing is that actually the continuous speed test never actually said that internet connection was down. It was always set up. It's just we had a much lower speed and uh, some of those uh, retry rates and package failures were quite high. So... Clearly, we can see from this that the FTTP is a long way ahead of the others. OK, so we've got the results and it was pretty clear the FTTP came out as the clear winner there. Uh, more than twice as fast than the 5G and the uh, Starlink. I think the issue is probably, and I am speculating here, I'm not 100% sure, but I think because we've got uh, routers in bridge mode, so the Starlink and the 5G in bridge mode, the issue is that it just takes a few seconds to wake that connection back up again for it to become active. Whereas with the fiber connection, we are going to an ONT, which is essentially a modem, a media converter, and that doesn't need to be woken up in the same way. So the connection's already active. That is my suspicion. If anyone has any further details on that, I'd be very interested to hear, but I think that's why we're getting that lag. But unfortunately, they are required, um, and so the FTTP comes out as a clear winner. And I think this would be exactly the same if you had a leased line as well. That connection will already be active, so it will be instant, or almost instant. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.